Hi, this is Carol the Crafty Whippet and welcome to Floss Tube number seven. This is the first week of December and it's starting to feel a little bit like Christmas for me. I have been busy working on my same deadline for the project. I know, I was a little complaining about that last week, but this week, smooth sailing. So I'm gonna check in on my whips, not a lot there. Talk a little bit about my December plans, mostly because it gives me something to think about. And I have a little bit of a haul from one, two, three stitch because I got suckered in on Cyber Monday. I don't even know if I was getting any great sales, like now that I think about it, probably not. But I had to place an order for some mill hole treasures and then I'd always thought it was a bit of a cliche when people would say oh, patterns or cross stitch supplies couldn't travel by themselves, but it didn't end up traveling alone. Oops. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with whips. First one is going to be Joie de Vivre, and this is what it looked like last week. And here it is today. Let's see. So I am not quite halfway through it. And I know I had said I wasn't loving the week's dye works and I wasn't loving the taking one stitch at a time. It's never going to be my preferred style of stitching, but first, oh, check out this back. This back looks, this is so immaculate for me. I am really impressed with it, but I have been going every single X, and when I'm working on this border, I'm just gonna look like this, um, it gets kind of tedious. I'm like, can I just, and I'm like, no, you know, this is a learning experience for me. And I have learned a lot about keeping your, where you wrap your stitches around the linen, keeping them all uniform because the X's will want to lay more uniformly um back when I, this is where i first started i have some particularly where you have these single x's and they don't have any support on any of the cardinal direction sides if you wrap it around like if you make the x and i always go from I'm trying to think how to describe this bottom left to top right and then i cross from bottom right to top left I hope I said that all right. But anyway, if you do like say going bottom left, top right, top left, bottom right, so where you have the back stitches going horizontally across the back, it makes a different expression of that X than if you do it to the side. It doesn't really matter much. It's when you have one next to each other. So where you have the support is one is vertical and it's right next to one that's horizontal and then the X's feel like they're just kind of flailing off in different directions. So this is teaching me a little bit more consistency on when I pick a direction that I'm going with it and that for me I prefer to make all of those back legs vertical. Just I, again consistency. It's not something I had ever noticed before but this project because creating the X one by one makes it so much more obvious and so I'm kind of chalking this up to this has been a really good learning experience. Um, the other thing I'll have to say, and I don't know if it's translating well here, there's not a lot of variegation in this floss. There's a little bit, you can see it in the lowercase letters. Um, the tops of each of the letters ended up being darker than the bottom, just how the thread ended up working out. It's subtle, but it's not... I think if I was going through this effort, I want there to be an outstanding payoff. I guess it's almost like this would be more fun if there was a true two totally different colors, then I would be getting, it would be more fun as far as the color payoff. I think it's beautiful, so I'm very happy with what I'm doing. It's just, I'm, you know, I can see like, hey, for a project like this, either go super variegated or just go straight DMC and I think I'd be happier. It's one of those 
for the time that, and this is a small project for me, but you're still putting time in it. This is, it should be fun. So I'm actually, I'm, like I said, chalking it up to, it's been a really good learning experience and glad I've done it. Okay. Obviously my next whip is going to be Sabrina. This is where she was last week. And here she is today. And hope I you know, get all of this in the frame. So as you can see, the skirt is done with the exception of the 3371 right through here. I just, I, after doing like all the color changes to this part of the ribbon, I kind of ran out of energy yesterday. I was, was just happy to get to this point. And taking the break, I didn't try to over the weekend, didn't try to after my daughter went to bed. I wasn't, I, I literally put it down four days, didn't even look at it. It was the best decision I ever made because when I came back to this yesterday, I was rejuvenated. This was more fun. It was like a fresh, fresh-ish feeling where I could look at it and say, oh, I am so close to the end of this skirt that I was motivated again, which is awesome. And I, and I realized I have, I was like, oh, I have just this. I also have some back stitching to do up here, but whatever, that won't take long at all. But I'm so excited, so excited that by the time you see me next week, all the chronic is going to be done and I'm going to be starting on the beading. Also, frame has been ordered. Winning! So I guess that's the other thing is that when I really feel like, yes, this is coming together that I did not set up unreasonable expectations for myself and that really I was just grumpy last week I think because I was I had spent too much energy on it and was pushing through to where it wasn't fun anymore so yesterday I hit a point where I'm like okay you know I could try to finish this and if I try to do it it won't be fun I still want to be able to work on it for the days this week that my kids are in school so don't push it do something else and it's okay. I think that's the thing is sometimes remembering to give myself permission to do it. And the other really good thing that I did that was smart, I had mentioned last week that I was all mad because I really wanted to play Fallout 76. Well, I have not had the timer to be able to do that, but that's okay. So one of the things I love most about playing any of the Fallout games is the radio soundtracks. Well, that means Go find internet radio that plays songs from the 1930s and the 40s. So what I did, and that's what made stitching this such an enjoyable thing. A, okay, so there's this one, it's called the 1920s Radio Network. It's an internet stream. And I turned it on basically right after the kids went to school. And I found that stitching to music is a better fit for me than trying to watch TV, trying to watch YouTube, trying to do any of the stuff where I have to divide my eyes. With the sound, I can hear it and I can stay focused on what's with me. And because the music itself goes back and forth, there's songs with vocals, there's songs without vocals. And I know a bunch of them and a bunch of them are never heard before and I may never hear again, but it's, so, so just enough to keep me mentally engaged without pulling me away from the project. Also, they're doing some Christmas music and okay, so remember when I said that I cannot handle Christmas radio in the car right now? The reason I can't handle Christmas radio in the car right now is I hate Santa Baby, All I Want for Christmas is You, Happy Christmas War is Over, like all of garbage songs that end up taking over every adult contemporary station in America. I don't want to hear those. I want to hear lots of Bing Crosby. I have Perry Como's Christmas album floating right here. Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. Um, I can even live without a lot of the instrumental. I mean, I get a little tired of trans Siberian Orchestra on the radio by the time Christmas rolls around. So anyway, they are pulling out some, they have like the Christmas songs are maybe like one in every four, one in every five, depending. And they're pulling out some real, I've never heard them before, the Jingle Bell Polka. I don't, 
it wasn't a great song, but it wasn't, it was something new and fresh. I'd never heard it before. So of course it was like, it was a fun amount of Christmas without being overwhelmingly so. So I'm feeling a little more towards the holiday spirit, but I'm not there yet. We don't have a Christmas tree, but we do have our outside lights on. So I guess that's the nice thing about, hey, you know, moving into the season, but not burning myself out yet in the first week of December. So to go along with that, I'm gonna skip ahead. I had another, it's not a whip, but I had mentioned I am going to be doing the Caroling Berries and I haven't opened up the packages yet, but I went ahead and while I was at Joanne's for some other reason last week, I find, it's not even close to my house and I find myself in there more than I should. Oh well, so I picked up Three flosses. Yes, I know there's only two projects. I haven't decided what I was like, okay, I'm gonna pick up a muted blue, a fun, like forest green, and a kind of garnet color. I haven't decided which one I'm use. I don't know if I'm gonna do both projects in one color or if I'm gonna do it in two separate colors. I was originally thinking this, but I'm like, hey, that's a little Christmassy, but like, you know, what if I want to keep stuff out for longer than just Bill Christmas? And then I was just like, oh, this color's pretty. So who knows? Haven't decided yet. And I found in my stash this, I don't even, I didn't buy this. So it is a 28 count even weave. It's not a huge piece. It's 15 by 18. So I'm kind of perfect for this. I can fit both pieces on here. And it's from Hobby Lobby for $3.99. But I didn't buy it. I don't know. I don't know if this came from one of my grandmothers. I don't know if this came from my mom's stash. They don't even have a Hobby Lobby in my mom's town. So I don't, it's, this is now like, once I pulled it out and I realized this is a mystery. I have no idea where this kind of fabric came from, but it's now going to get used. So that's like, that's my December plans. As far as the stuff that's not currently a whip, that's my next start. I'm not I don't feel like I have to finish anything that I already have doing or that I have going before I start those. They're just small, fun. And when I say small, they are this, I'm going to do the cushion model and the stitch count is 79 wide, 55 high. They're not big. So it'll be, it'll be fun. And in addition to that, so I, t I fished out the fabric. I have a box of just random cross stitch type stuff. And I found my old, I had gotten this, I don't know when. And it is a needlepoint project, pansies. But more importantly, it's needlepoint and I had not gotten far on it, as you can see. Um, I had actually gotten further than this. I frogged a whole bunch of this last night when I realized everything's going the wrong way. I have, I'm doing, I was doing continental stitch, but I don't know why it's such a mess through here. So I'm just taking it out. I'm gonna start fresh. Um, but why? Because it, it made me feel good. So this is gonna, I think, become one of my Hey, I don't feel like cross stitching, but let me mess with um, a project. I like it. I think this, I don't know what I would do with it when I'm done, but that's future me's problem. I don't care. So this was, like I said, I found it. I hadn't seen it until I was digging out that fabric. And I realized that's something I wanted to do. Wanted to pull it out. So there you go. Those are, that's December. Now, haul time. Um, I had a video basically saying, talking about how I'd done too much shopping and that I needed to have a better plan for getting stuff done. I still don't have a plan for doing getting stuff done. I'm going to be talking about 2019, hopefully in the next two weeks sometime. Um, but that would require me to sit down and plan out 2019. I haven't done that yet for anything. Kids school, kids active, none of it. 2019 is a kind of scary year for me. We're probably gonna be moving. I don't wanna move. So I've been doing a lot of 
not thinking about it so that I don't have to face that whole uprooting ourselves again. <sighs> so I think that's one of the, but now I want to like sit down and at least figure out hobby wise what I'm going to do because I, none of these are dependent on where I am. I can do it anywhere, including in the car. But it's time to start thinking about it and face like, oh, what's really going to be happening? But I'm not going to do that again. Let's talk about what I got from 123Stitch instead. I had thought I had bought all of the beads I needed for Sabrina three, two or three years ago. I kit, I no kidding kitted it all up because I thought I was going to finish it at that point, right before it went into hibernation. And so I was going through the bag and I'm like, okay, I see all the beads. Where are the treasures? Then I thought about it some more and said, I don't remember ordering treasures. I the beads, I had to do a special order because the shop was out of them at that point. But I realized, okay, I need treasures. And my thought process was I didn't really want to drive across town to go drop into the LNS to go see if they had these treasures in or not. And which they probably do because honestly, they keep their supply of Mill Hill stuff really well stocked. I want to give them absolute credit for that. I think my original thought process is, well, if I don't go into the shop, then I can't buy the things. That was a bad plan. So these are for Sabrina. I thought they were gonna, I, because I didn't really know what they were gonna look like. I thought they were gonna be darker. I don't know if you can see that, but they're, they're not. They're like pink and kind of yellow. I mean, it, it's an iridescent look, but I was expecting it to be a darker iridescent look. Oh well. So then what I wasn't thinking about was my LNS, generally only carries the current Marabilia pattern in stock. Which, by the way, I, I think Lady Justice looks really pretty. Never gonna buy her, never gonna stitch her. And in order to get any of the old ones, you're having to go in, place an order, wait for it to show up. I mean, I should in order to support my LNS, but I was kind of feeling some instant gratification. Also, I kind of got a little freaked out by the sheer number of patterns that look like they've gone out of print this year. And I realized that some of the ones I wanted were, they're not new, they're not, they're not super, super old. We're not talking like trying to find, oh, I don't know, something in the age of Winter Queen, which is in print, but it's definitely an older pattern. So while I was on one, two, three stitch, I'm like, well, why don't I just go ahead and order things? Because if I don't, they're going to go out of print. And then I'd feel really bad because like, for example, um, picked up Stargazer and some of the ones that had been going out of print are really not much older than this one. So excuses. I basically, I wanted, so I got, and I have a list by the way, it's like 12 patterns long and a bunch of these were not available. Like you could order them, but you were going to be waiting. And I wasn't feeling like waiting. I was all about instant gratification. So I just bought the ones that were in stock most of them. Um, so this one is White Christmas and I like that the colors for this really mirror Royal Holiday. The only problem is that because the Royal Holiday goes with all my other queens it's not like they can live together because this is a much narrower project but I don't care I think it's pretty. I may not get to that one but I do. The other thing that I like and you'll notice is I don't pick out Mirabilis with a lot of like background. There are some that have extensive backgrounds. I don't tend to pick those, but I liked the window in this. It was pretty. I like gothic stuff, so it's cool. And then the peony garden. That's because it's pretty. I love peonies. I've never grown any of my own, but I liked it. Um, there were a whole, like I said, a bunch of others that I also want, but they weren't there so I didn't and then I was like okay well while I'm here um the songbirds garden series number four yep and number five <laughs> um obviously I haven't started on any of the others but I wanted more so I got what was available at that time number six has come out too um so I'll get that at some point. And then, well, birds. This is, I'm not 
Again, we're going with the, I'm kind of not proud of this. But the bird collection from Heartstring Samplery, one, two, three, and four. Um, yeah, I bought all four of them. I love, love, love the birds in these. And my daughter was the one who totally like outed me to my husband for having bought all this like cross stitching stuff. But she's like, ah, chickadee! For whatever reason, she's absolutely enamored of chickadees right now. And so I think she wants me to make it for her. I, I'm, mm -mm. I'm not really feeling the stitching for other people right now, but I I think they're adorable. I want a house full of bird pictures. At least I have a theme that I know I like. So there's that. And then the last one is Rosewood Manor Silent Sampler, and it's Basket of Flowers. Elf, but I mean, it's a sampler. I love that this reminds me of the picture that I stitched for my mom in college. Um, that, I mean, it's not the same, but the basket is like, this is like a more well thought out complicated version of that flower basket that I had stitched and love. So I got it. Um, yeah, more stuff. Do I need more stuff? No. Do any of us need more stuff? No. Do we want more stuff? Yes. It's okay. Um, but I do plan on stitching these this year. Um, I am kind of idly thinking about for the cottage garden one, because there's going to be 12, is making that a monthly project so that I get one. Aim for one a month. They're not small, so that might be a little ambitious. Again, haven't really thought too much about it, but I have a lot of stuff where it's in groups of 12. The uh, the bird collection from Heartstring Samplery, that's, I mean, it's four charts, three birds a piece, kind of lends itself to the once a month theme. I do think I'm going to try to find at least one set of projects that's going to be a do it once a month so at the end of the year you have a completed collection I guess I'm gonna go with a completed collection because I'm not I don't want to do just one where it's a single piece of fabric and then I'm doing 12 motifs in it oh that's really cool don't get me wrong because I have a couple of those but I like the idea of having a, a legit finish every month that is at least to be done stitching and then wait until the end frame them all at the same time frame them as a go at Again, not something I'm going to worry about too much today, but I do, I'm finding that when you have something, the small finish, that it's motivating to keep working on the bigger projects. Because, oh yeah, the other goal for next year, I said I didn't really have plans and apparently I have more plans than I realized. Um, okay, I would like to get a Mirabilia done next year as well. That may not be realistic. That's going to be the have to map it out on a calendar and figure it out. So true 2019 plans. Not going to do this week, but I now have more options of stuff to do and I love them. I guess that's the other thing is sometimes accepting that for these patterns, I buy them because I love them, not because I have any intent of actually stitching them, which kind of pains me a little bit. I don't want to get into the collector mentality. The thing I don't like about the collector mentality is you do get into a fear of missing out where you start buying patterns specifically because you're worried, using the Mirabilia's again, because you're worried about, oh, it's going to go out of print, so I have to have it, whether or not it's one you like. So if you ever see me start buying Mirabilia mermaids, I don't like the mermaid patterns. They're just not for me. So if you see me start buying them, I have succumbed fully to the fear of missing out and I like, please yell at me. I don't want to be that person. And I do think it is easy really in any hobby to fall into that trap. I mean, I've seen people fall into that trap 
with horse tack. Yes, no joke. It don't ask me how or why, but I have seen that. So don't want to get down that path, but um, really, like I said, it's with any thing that you're passionate about, it is easy to acquire things for the sake of acquiring them. And I will say that I have noticed this in the past with sewing particularly, but also when I buy yarn for knitting, is when I'm not doing things for my hobby as much, I buy. It's if, and I'm gonna use knitting as an example just because it's easier to be vague. So let's say that I perceive myself as a knitter, but the only thing I knit are sweaters and I don't have any on any needles at a moment in time. And I have no real plans to sit down and start a sweater because I'm swamped with who knows what. This is all hypothetical, right? So you, but because you're not actively knitting, you start questioning, well, am I still a knitter? What if I'm not, re you know, what if my hobby is not really reflecting who I am? But if you're buying yarn actively, you're knitting, you're partaking in the hobby, you're just not partaking in the actual activity, but you're using the shopping activity as a substitute. Well, I'm saying that I have seen myself do this before. So on one hand, I would be like really upset with me, like, oh, I'm buying patterns. But the really awesome thing is right now, I'm buying patterns at the same time that I am using patterns. In the past, this hasn't necessarily been true. So am I giving myself kind of a buy right now? Yeah, I am. And I'm okay with that. So um, thanks for putting up with my ridiculous convoluted explanation there. But I am... Like I said, I'm at peace with the having bought more stuff. I, um, I guess it's now has me super excited for really thinking out what do I want to accomplish next year? What can I accomplish next year? That's another big one. Um, and I don't know. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me and putting up with my rambling explanations of everything that I'm sure sound reasonably like excuses. That's cool. And that you are having a great beginning to your month and I will see you next time. Bye.